Well, welcome everyone. We're so glad you were able to join us tonight for our information session about the Marlboro Institute for Liberal Arts and Interdisciplinary Studies, as well as our Interdisciplinary Studies major, an opportunity for you to self-design your major, which is an awesome opportunity, I think, at the um, undergraduate level to really explore your passions and interests uh, through <clears throat> your own design. So we're excited to talk to you a little bit tonight about the program. Uh, we've got two of our um, faculty. We've got, well, our, our dean of the Marlboro Institute, as well as one of our faculty members, to talk a little bit more about the program with you. And most importantly, we want to answer all of your questions about the program this evening. Uh, so with that said, we'll go ahead and get things started this evening. I'm going to turn things over to our uh, faculty, and I'll start with uh, turning things over to Amy to introduce herself. Yeah, hello, everybody. Welcome to the webinar. I'm Amy Ansel. I'm Dean of the Marlboro Institute for Liberal Arts and Interdisciplinary Studies. And the Marlboro Institute hosts a number of different programs. We do uh, have all the liberal arts general education requirement courses I'd be happy to talk about. We have 19 different liberal arts minors I'd be happy to talk about. The honors programs in the Marlboro Institute. Uh, we have an Emerson Prison Initiative in the Institute. All of those things would be great for the Q&A, but what our focus is for our presentation before we turn it over to question and answers is on our interdisciplinary studies major. It's a self-designed major uh, that we've had at Emerson for a number of years, but it went through a really big transformation four years ago as the Institute became the Marlboro Institute, um, where we brought on faculty and approaches to education from Marlboro College in Vermont, where Adam Franklin Lyons came from. So I will turn it over to Adam, then we'll get started with going through some slides, just some with some real basics, and then uh, answer any questions you may have. So over to you, Adam. Hi, I'm Adam Franklin Lyons. Um, as, as Amy said, I, I started out at Marlboro College in Vermont, where I taught for a number of years in an educational system that was all about self-design and you as the student arrive there, figure out what it is that you want to do over a period of time and, and eventually propose your own, the own, your own concept for your major and your own senior project to go with that. And so the, the interdisciplinary studies major is, is a version of that. I came to Emerson a few years ago with, with when the Institute became the Marlboro Institute. Uh, I teach history. I teach uh, medieval European history most of the time. Um, and I teach in the, the history minor, and I have also advised a bunch of students in the interdisciplinary studies major, and I've been the, the coordinator for the major for a couple of years as well. Um, so I'm, I'm a big fan of the major and um, have plenty of thoughts about it. So. Yeah, so Adam has years of history, and as an undergraduate at my university, um, I was a self-designed major as well. So yeah, we really love the option. So can everyone see as my screen shared? We see the cover page here. Oops. Oh, it's very sensitive. So, um, so in a way, Adam already kind of cued some of this up, the idea that um, this is an opportunity to, to design your own major. And the strongest designs are those that draw from, uh, you know, strengths of Emerson. It, it is tougher if you're looking to design a major with course resources that we don't support. So it's the best for a student who, you know, is really interested in Emerson and has so many different ideas that it's hard to decide. I don't know if I want to apply to Emerson in that major, or maybe I really want the other major. This could be a really wonderful option for you because you're able to you know, curate your own major that draws from both two or even more programs. So Emerson's quite unique in that students come in, apply and come in as a major. I know many other institutions, you don't really decide on your major until your third or fourth semester. So the IDS major, we call it the interdisciplinary studies major, is different than most majors where at Emerson you come in with it, in that you come in as an IDS major, but you have three semesters to explore, 
to work closely with faculty, with your peers, and decide only after those three semesters are under your belt, you know, really where you want to commit uh, across these different programs. And then as Adam mentioned, we could talk more about it in um, the Q&A. All students do a final senior year project, a senior capstone. And I think that's a real distinguishing element for this major. Uh, for years sharing these platforms with Adam, I know Adam has a really good way of putting it. So I'm going to turn it to him that certainly it's an opportunity to have courses from different majors, but you would want to ask your question or yourself a question. Are you really interested in at the end of that in your senior year, integrating the things you've learned from the different areas into a project? So Adam, on the project, I'll turn it over to you. Sure. Project-based um, learning. I, I think the best way to think about the project is to give you at least a couple of examples of what students have done before, first of all. Um, and as Amy said, the project in the senior year, it's meant to show how not just that you happen to study history and that you happen to study creative writing and you know how to do some history and you know how to do creative writing, but those are separate things, but that you're actually looking at something that demonstrates how those things speak to each other. So I had a student who did that, uh, history and creative writing, and wrote a series of short stories that were all placed in historical settings. It was actually, it was cool. This The short stories uh, were meant to speak to each other as well. So the characters repeated, their personalities repeated from story to story, but they were set in different historical circumstances that the student had researched to give them a sort of different life or a different experience, but with the same outlook as it were. So a real combination of those elements. Um, We've had students do things like marketing and environmental studies. That was a really great senior project where the student actually designed a full marketing plan for wind power for a wind power project in Massachusetts, right? So looking at how marketing gets used for green energy and what that has to do with um, designing an infrastructure in Massachusetts that is less reliant on fossil fuels. Um, and you can combine, as Amy said, any of the things that that there's strength in, right? There's a student now who's doing a really interesting project that is sort of multiple versions of storytelling. So creative writing, journalism, um, communications, and is like making a podcast and doing interviews, sort of sociological interviews, and telling the story of Northwest Native Americans, but, you know, written for... A sort of magazine or journal like a newspaper article a long form article and then done as a narrative podcast and then told as sort of indigenous storytelling creative writing techniques right so using these different methods but all in this coherent whole that lets you say no no this is using these lets me do something in this area that i'm interested in in a way that no one of them would on their own um, and it's and fantastic. Really, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Ed. That's it. Well, I was just going to say it's fantastic that you graduate not only with a degree that says you took these courses and those courses, but a substantive piece of work to show for it in terms of kind of, you know, this individually designed project that you carry out in the senior year. Again, with a ton of faculty support and, um, and resources. So you're kind of going along with your cohort of students and not doing it just in your own orbit. So, so we, we, we really try to match that, that um, students, I always say like each student is a major of one, but we make sure that we have a strong cohort based situation where you're going through it not just with other students in your cohort, but also working with students who are a year, two, three years uh, ahead of you. Okay, Adam, I'm going to go on to the next slide. Ready? Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Ready. Oh, yeah. I didn't think. So this is just a very visually stimulating uh, circle graph that all it's showing is 
you can combine courses from all the programs at Emerson. Sometimes people think that because it's a Marlboro Institute major that you're combining courses from within the Marlboro Institute. And you certainly can, and many, if not the majority do, but you don't need to. You could come in and combine, you know, marketing with, um, with, I'm looking at something from another that's not, you know, marketing and political communication or, um, you know, public relations and communication disorders. So, so really you can combine any different area. Some of the more common approaches is to take two different areas from different departments and sort of plug and play. We have guidelines that show if you want to do this area, we recommend these courses. If you want to do the other area, these courses plug and play, you put those two together and articulate how they cohere into a major. But some students have a theme or a question or an issue that interests them. And then you can draw across everywhere in the department you just have to satisfy, you know, the reviewers that it coheres, that you don't just have breadth across areas, that it's scattershot, but you have depth, even if they live in different departments, the courses, that you are sort of exposing yourself to depth. So it's really saying, I guess the world is your oyster, education is your circle, whatever the metaphor, that there's just a tremendous number of programs that you can draw on in building your major from across the college. Adam, anything to um, add to that or should I move on? I, th I think the next slide actually has another graphic that is another way to think about this. Oh, I'll, it's I'll... so sensitive. Yeah, I'll turn over to you on Perfect. this. Um, so when you we're go to the Marlboro... Over here. Oh, go ahead. Um, I was just joking, we're geometric over here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So when you go to the, the Emerson website and you look at all the different options and you think, all right, if I'm going to do IDS, what does that mean? Um, there are lists of majors and minors uh, across the college. And as Amy was saying, you can combine a major and a major, right? There's nothing to stop you from doing film and political communication, which are both majors that you can do. You can combine. One of the most common I find is combining a major with a minor. Uh, it's quite easy to say, you know, I really want to do creative writing, but I want to combine that with philosophy. I want to write auto philosophy or, uh, you know, I want to do film, but I want to combine film with psychology or environmental studies or, um, you know, uh, women and gender studies. Um, any of the minors that you find can be, you know, added into a major to enrich it and give it a new perspective. Um, but you can also do two minors, right? So uh, sometimes you have to to sort of figure out the courses a little better because the the big majors, right, film and creative writing and and journalism, all have pretty clear tracks, as Amy was saying, sort of guidelines to say like, here's the basic courses, here's the the core material that you need to learn. Uh, if you do minors, it gives you more flexibility. Um, but also it means you have to do more of the articulating of the major, which can be a, an enriching thing to do. Um, but you can ultimately combine philosophy and history, uh, you know, women and gender studies with psychology, um, any of the, the minors, both interdisciplinary minors and um, disciplinary minors. One, one other note about that, there are a handful of interdisciplinary minors, and we've mentioned a few of them, environmental studies, uh, women and gender studies, um, African-American and Africana studies, and there's a few others. I can't rattle them all off, but the minors that are already interdisciplinary, you can do as the majority of your degree because they, they count as a sort of interdisciplinary area that you can focus on. And they already draw from, you know, African-American studies already draws from political science and history and film and art. So- yeah you can do that as your major and just make sure that your courses cover some of that interdisciplinarity. Um, so that's one way that you can really make them, you know, delve into a minor in a, in a richer way if you want. And this is just for your major. We do have students who 
build their interdisciplinary major from a major and a major or any of these three ways and have a minor because you're building your major with 48 to 52 credits. But many students will then have a minor outside of this self-design major and then often will find a way to connect it with that year-long senior project as well. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next one. Advising. Right. Um, you want to start on this, Adam, and I'll fill in some holes. Sure. Um, I'll I'll talk about the uh, the MI courses, and then you can talk about sort of working with faculty and and readers and stuff. Okay. Um, so, a lot of the advising happens in, as, as Amy mentioned earlier, this is an individually designed major. You're a major of one but we keep a sort of group camaraderie about the whole thing. So every year that you're in the major, there is a seminar that you take with all of the other students that are also going through this process of figuring out what the heck their major is gonna be. Um, and in the first year you take MI 190, uh, you're with a faculty member who knows a lot about the major and you can have sort of open-ended conversations about like, what does it mean to be in this? While, while doing some coursework as well. Uh, sophomore year in 290, which is mentioned uh, on the slide, uh, that's where you actually design your major. Like the thing that you come out of that seminar with is your major application, which states what you wanna do. Um, that's in your third semester in the fall of your sophomore year. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and it's at that point that you also get assigned along the way, we have an academic advising center. Um, and the, the, the woman who is in charge of the IDS majors, uh, Lori, Lori Adelson, um, is great and knows a bunch about the major. You, you're connected with that person before you even arrive at Emerson. So you already have somebody to talk to about what this looks like. And she's very knowledgeable about all the different areas in the college and is full of great advice. In the MI290 seminar, you start to identify faculty members, people in the discipline, people who are going to sort of guide you towards what your senior project might feel like um, beyond this sort of more open-ended, what is your major going to look like? Um, and then in your junior and senior year, the MI 390 and 490, those are specifically geared towards doing the capstone project. Um, and I'll let Amy talk a little bit more about those. That's right. So you'll be with faculty and then your cohort of students in your year uh, in in the junior year, it's really sort of a boot camp preparing for what your senior project is going to be, sort of thinking about how to do literature reviews or how to, um, you know, kind of write the prospectus and the abstract, all of these tools to get you thinking about how to ask the right questions and refer to the right resources and everything. And then in your senior year, it goes over two semesters, the senior projects over the course of two semesters. And for each four credits that you do, in addition to the um, seminar instructor that you have bringing everyone through the senior year, you can choose content experts. We call them readers or viewers. So if you're doing a project um, combining creative writing and philosophy, I think Adam had said as one example, you could have a, a reader for the creative writing portion that you're working on and a reader for the philosophy portion. So you both have someone kind of bringing you through the whole process and keeping everyone on track and the content faculty where you're working one and one on one around your particular project. So lot, lots of different advising sort of in the MI courses from the academic advising center, and then in this senior year support for your, for your senior project. Okay, I'm gonna move to the next one. Um. Adam, let me go over to this with you. Well, I'll say something about year long and then I'll send it over to you on the optional forms. So the senior capstone is year long. So the minimum that students do is four credits in one semester, four credits in the other semester. It is possible to swap out one of those. Like let's say your self-designed major involves 
um, film production and you're in a film production capstone, that can substitute for one of the four credits. So we really try to make it flexible so you're getting as much of the support as is possible and desirable from the, the content area of your major. Uh, some students do as much as eight credits and eight credits over the year. So it's really half of your senior year you will devote to the project. And ideas on that change quite a bit as you're going along and decide, you know, which components that you would want to use for the project. And, and that helps to inform um, how many credits you take it for. You really don't need to commit to that until the very end of your junior year, beginning of the, your, your senior year. So you want to talk, Adam, about the, the multiple forms? Sure. Um, components. So one of the, one of the things we don't have a good, we call it a capstone um, and we call it lots of things. There's no perfect title. Capstone often makes people think that it's like one project that you're producing. And maybe a better way to think about it is that you're going to produce a portfolio, right? You're going to graduate with a portfolio that can include academic research essays, films, uh, videos with academic content, lectures, podcasts, right? Performances, especially if you're in, in something like theater. Um, we have students organizing, uh, you know, panel discussions that they're going to, they're, they're going to coordinate and moderate. Um, all sorts of different aspects that students bring together. All of the senior projects do have a, a more academic research-based component. Uh, occasionally that's a lecture, often that's an essay. Um, so that one tends to be a little more fixed, but around that you can create your own constellation of the types of things that you want to do. I mentioned before, I think a really good example of that is the uh, the student who's working on the the Northwest native, the, the, um, the Salish tribe actually right near Seattle. I saw somebody who was from Seattle um, and has like family members that are related to the Salish tribe. So there's sociological research into the position of the tribe now and the, the lives that Native Americans lead in the present day combined with these other forms of like journalistic writing and podcasting and, you know, semi-fictional sort of auto history storytelling to get at the different ways that this same narrative can be viewed from both academic work all the way over to uh, fiction and narrative, um, but all focused on the same thing. And you get this set of, you know, four or five different uh, almost versions of the same thing, but that let us see it in a different way based on each of those. So that's one of the strengths of it is really that that you choose these different components in a way that they speak to each other. Wonderful. Yeah, I like that senior portfolio. Okay, and then we talked about the faculty. So here uh, we want to come to the conclusion of the formal uh, portion of our presentation. Please do contact any one of us. A lot of times these conversations devolve as they should to one-on-one. -on -one. What do you want to do? What are you interested in doing? There's only so much we can do sort of is in, in general, because it comes down to really each individual student and what they're wanting to do and what their goals are. But we'll have time for Q&A now. Definitely don't uh, hesitate to, to email us with, with questions afterwards as well. Okay, Mike, should I send it over to you? You want to um, uh, present the questions to us or do you want us to look? Absolutely. No, no, I'll go ahead and uh, uh, sort of host the Q&A portion, I suppose. So we'll, first, let me just say thank you to Amy and Adam. That was great uh, content and information. Uh, I, I think I feel like even knowing the program, I learned a couple of things tonight as well, which so that's great. So yeah, so let's get to the questions. So I think uh, as was just put in the chat, if you have any questions that you'd like us to answer live right now, feel free to go ahead and put that in the Q&A box. Um, so by all means, uh, put anything you're thinking about in there. We did have a couple of questions that were submitted in advance when folks were signing up. So I'll start with those. And then if we have other questions come into play, we can, we can handle those as well. So the first one I would say would be perhaps 
uh, good information or, or, or good question to ask either Amy or Adam, or perhaps you both have some insight on this, but the student asked, do you find that students who are more successful uh, or are more successful when straying away from multiple topics of study. So it sounds like maybe if they if they are a bit more narrow, what would you what would be your take on sort of expansive versus narrow focus? I can I can start. Yeah, okay. and then I have a view. Let's hear you, Adam. Yeah. Um. I I hear in the question, and I do agree with this, right? If you show up and you just say, "I really like psychology, and I want to take some psychology classes," and I really like environmental studies, and I want to take some environmental studies classes, and I also want to learn how to edit film. Um, if you don't know what that adds up to, yeah, that is harder, right? If you're sort of casting around. But the number of disciplines, the boundaries between disciplines are somewhat arbitrary. So if you have a core question, if you have a thing you're driving at, but you don't know what the right discipline or combination of disciplines to get there is, you can still be very successful if you have a sort of vision for where you're going. So it's not necessarily is your vision a major, but is your vision uh, like, here's what you wanna be able to do in the world, or here's a topic that you're passionate about you know, be that thinking about urban poverty or, uh, you know, worrying about a post-oil future or, um, you know, being able to tell effective stories about, uh, you know, U.S. history and edu for educational purposes or something. Like if you have a sort of thing like that that you're passionate about, you can figure out the disciplines when you get here. Yeah, I was going to say something very similar just in the use of the word coherence. I think if you're combining a lot of different areas, then the challenge for you, but many students meet it, is just to make the case of how they cohere for the ends that you're putting it to. And also to remember, you know, the major is 48 to 52 credits out of a total of 128 credits you need to graduate. So not everything has to be in the major. You may say, I'm interested in these five things, five different areas, but my major is the most coherent if I kind of combine three. And the other two, I'm going to either do a minor or I'm going to just take courses or I'm going to, yeah, use them as elective credit. And, and a lot of them do show about, well, here's courses outside my major, but they kind of link in this way. So um, I really can't that. think of any students who have had to gratuitously narrow. Um, I have a good example of the major mm -hmm. with the minor. We, we had one student who was really into uh, economics and specifically the sort of economics of online content and did some like data visualization and mathematics and economics, but also wanted to learn entrepreneurship. And we have an entrepreneurship minor. The entrepreneurship was not part of that student's capstone. It was not incorporated in the major, but the student took a bunch of entrepreneurship stuff and actually like won uh, like People's Choice Award in the entrepreneurship final project category. All that was separate from the major, but something that the student was interested in, right? So there is a point where you can sort of break things off and say, you know what, I'm just really passionate about this and I'm going to take some classes and I'm going to get a minor and I'm going to do it, but it doesn't have to be the sort of core of the major. So that's another way to do it. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, great. Um, so here's one way I think was sort of somewhat answered during the um, during the presentation, but I'll ask it and then maybe it's really the, the second part of the question that's, that's maybe the more of emphasis for this Q&A. Uh, so it's student asks, can you design any major, even if it's not part of the core curriculum or majors offered, are there limitations? So maybe it's worth asking both, you know, the limitations, not only like what they are in general, but are there specific departments that maybe it's not full access to every single course that's offered within that department? So maybe. Yeah, yeah I had thought of that. I had read before. So I had thought of that when I was saying if you want to take a course, if you want to design a major around sculpture and we don't support sculpture, 
that's not the best choice. Oh, there's a way around it. I'll come back to. So there's a couple of different ways to answer it. One is what I hear you saying, Mike Lynch, is there are some limitations around Emerson programs that are highly sequenced. Those are media production and um, especially the audition-based musical theater and the highly sequenced BFA programs. So there are limitations around those, around uh, the BFA programs, certainly. And students do do performing arts and media production, but you need to come in thinking about it quite early. You can't decide you want to do that in your fourth semester and then have time to do all the courses with prereqs and get to the depth. So there are some limitations. I would say those are the most challenging ones, um, but students do it, it's musical mm -hmm. theater and VMA. So the other case is if it's an area like sculpture that Emerson doesn't support. So that's true, right? I mean, you would want to build your major from that circle graphs of all the different programs we have. The degree to which there's a workaround is this. We do have um, the Pro Arts Consortium that you could look up, like students at Berkeley College of Music or Mass Art and um, different programs that participate there. If you take and complete courses there, you can, in re retrospect, apply them to your major. We can't build it into the start just because we don't have access to the enrollment. And if there were an issue, we can't promise you because it's their enrollment. It's never been an issue to my knowledge, but you sort of do it in retrospect. Or another couple of students who have done, as an example, a study abroad program to build in components that are not strong at Emerson. So Adam, I'm thinking about Valencia. You want to mention Valencia sure. as one um, example? Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking of that too. So we're, we are connected. This is also through the Pro Arts Consortium. You can do a semester of basically Berkeley College of Music classes in Valencia in Spain. Um, there is some music at Emerson, but it's not quite as robust as you might want for major more studies but, yeah yeah so we, we more yeah music history music history and culture um so we had one student who went and did a whole semester of coursework in berkeley college of music material to sort of bolster that side of degree that they wanted to do um i have another good example actually of a student that i'm working with now who has the has the thing but not necessarily the degree the uh disciplines, right? And the thing is uh, thinking about the use of language or thinking about the use of music in language instruction and second language learning or, or um, you know, non-native speakers of a language using music as a way to enrich or better understand or learn that language. And so the student took language acquisition, thought about doing it through communication and speech disorders because that's related but then was also looking at psychology and developmental psychology, right? As a natural place to think about language learning, which is covered in some of the psychology classes. And then again, there's the music history and culture. So there's some music history, but what's the right music and psychology classes that add up to that? They are out there, but it, it's been some sort of triangulation to figure out how those uh, speak to that final area. Um, so yeah, if it's not well supported at Emerson, sometimes there are ways to do it, but it is worth asking. If you have that thing in mind, it's worth asking, like, what are the different avenues that would get me there? What can Emerson support? Mm -hmm. uh, that does sometimes come down to a, like, what do you want to do? I'll also mention, since there was some other interest in pro arts and, and some of the pre-submitted questions, um, and please, Amy and Adam, if you're familiar with it, any changes that I'm not aware of, you know, in essence, um, one, when it comes to the idea of not being able to guarantee, you know, specific courses will be available, as if I'm not mistaken, it's the term before whichever term you're looking at taking a course is when available courses are released. So it's not necessarily that every school opens up every course in their curriculum to, to the pro arts students from other pro art institutions. Um, from Emerson's perspective, 
uh, I believe, unless it's changed, that uh, you can take typically up to one class per semester, excluding your first semester. So you, you wouldn't typically be able to take it your first semester. But after that, there is the potential to take up to one class per semester at one of the pro art schools. Um, so if it gives you some idea about what you might be able to do to incorporate that into your, you know, your potential uh, programming or, or design along the way for your major. So just a little bit of extra on that. Um, here's a good one. Um, as someone who really values community, how is the community at Emerson? And if you all want to talk about that from, you know, certainly an academic perspective, but perhaps even your insights to, you know, engagements with students outside of the classroom as well. I think Adam would be great for that. Mike, just to let you know, there is a question in the Q and A mm -hmm. portion. Yeah. 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 Adam, you want to talk about community? That's, that's a loaded question. That's a, that's a big one. Yeah. yeah. It's funny because at, at Marlboro college, there's sort of, there's different types of communities, right? So Emerson is urban. It's right in downtown Boston. It's really vibrant. There are tons of things going on. And the students that I've seen who are most successful are often interested in, you know, they want to try this club or they want to be part of this co-curricular and try this activity. And they almost move in, in different student groups. Uh, you know, it's, it's almost more ad hoc. Uh, you, you don't develop. What we did at Marlboro was we were like all in the same place all the time, right? We all ate in one room together, literally. It was small enough that that was possible. So that was like one version of a sort of community where you're with the same people all the time and you get to know them really well. Um, Emerson is really vibrant, but it's going in lots of directions at once. So if you're the sort of person who is like, oh, I want to try that. I want to get involved in this club. I want to talk to those students, uh, you know, about politics at lunch or whatever it is. There's all those options. And that creates a really sort of vibrant feel to the community, which is great. Um, and then, you know, within the IDS major, we've we've preserved just a little bit of that feel of like faculty and students occasionally just get together to like have ice cream or talk about stuff, that sort of slower version of community. So there's little bits of that within the Institute and within the IDS major, but Emerson as a whole, it has that sort of big multi-moving part feel to the community that if you're into that is great. Yeah, that's the community at large. And then in IDS, he has some different social events. In the past, we've been doing trips up to Marlboro for, with students. Uh, the different seminars we talked about each year for the IDS, they often get together all to, you know, all together, at least three of the dis different sections. So you're meeting students from across sections. There's a, is it so called ComCom, Adam? There's a community committee where yep. students, faculty, and staff get together and talk about what sort of events and how to strengthen community. Uh, I think it's important at any time this day and age, but especially when it's a self designed major, we really wanted to kind of complement that with the sense of, of community and cohort. Um, yeah. So, oh, there's a couple of things. Mike, you want to look at the Q&A? Uh, yes, yes, I'll jump in there. So so the first one, and I, I'll go ahead and take this one. Um, so is there a high school GPA requirement for the major? So generally speaking, I wouldn't say that there is necessarily a specific requirement. That being said, um, yeah, this is a pretty rigorous major. Uh, I think there's a lot of... Um, uh, self-motivation that a student needs to, uh, I think, to navigate it successfully. So mm -hmm. from a performance standpoint, we tend to find those that are the most successful, you know, are, tend to be pretty strong students that have challenged themselves in high school. That being said, there isn't necessarily a prescribed, it's X number or forget about it. You know, we look at uh, a holistic approach. Generally speaking, I would say if you are a student that is at least in the B plus to A minus range or higher with a pretty challenging curriculum, uh, you know, that you've attempted, you know, based on what's available to you, that you've attempted to challenge yourself, um, you know, the rest of your application, you know, if that looks looks pretty strong as well, good recommendations, well-written essays, thoughtful essays, et cetera. Yeah, you know, I think, Obviously, can't 
guarantee admission at that point, but I'd say you're putting yourself in a pretty solid position uh, for consideration. And then uh, this question, I guess it's also somewhat admissions related for an IDS major with a combination of film production, they wanna in incorporate film into it, is applying with a portfolio necessary? So the answer to that question is no, it's certainly encouraged. And if you wanna share certainly more about you know who you are um, and kind of like what your work is like and what your storytelling yeah. abilities are, by all means, feel free. One thing to keep in mind with our film, uh, our media production, um, media arts production major, you, you are not required to submit a portfolio as well. So the same would hold true in this case as well. It would be purely optional. Okay. There is one last question that um, I think was, was sort of mentioned in one of the responses to an earlier question, but a student very specifically, and this was pre-submitted, had indicated as a musical theater major, can I also take classes in singer songwriting uh, if offered? So I guess the, the the main response to that is this IDS being the major, you wouldn't be or couldn't be a musical theater major and still be involved directly in IDS. So you, it would have to be a choice right. of pursuing one path or the other. You could do something like you know theater and songwriting and design mm -hmm. a you know a major around that that wasn't necessarily strictly about musical theater um so there you know there might be ways to do that but yeah if you want to do musical theater you should do musical theater you can perhaps take uh you know you could do something like a poetry minor if you want to practice like songwriting and lyrics writing alongside that you could do a poetry minor with a musical theater major right there's sort of maybe other ways to get at that same path yeah, we have a student doing that now, actually, poetry and song. We have a course called Poetry and Song, taught by a composer in performing arts and a poet in writing literature and publishing. Um, but yeah, we really only support a self-designed major if it's sufficiently distinct from a major that already exists. So we're pretty strict about students combining areas of the college across departments and not different kind of sub programs within one department. There's a couple um, exceptions to that. You could combine different liberal arts areas within the Marlboro Institute and have everything within the liberal arts. And it's also possible marketing communication has several different programs in it, the business of creative enterprises, media psychology, and PR marketing courses, you can combine within that. But otherwise, um, yeah, like you couldn't do within visual and media arts, there's media studies within VMA and film production. You couldn't do a self-designed major that was film production and media studies because that would be a vma major like a right, strange right. path to, as a vma major so or no, another good example would be creative writing and literature right as a creative writer you already have to take like you're already doing literature that's that's already built into that major so there's right. no reason to do it through this and then you'd be a wrp major exactly yeah, yeah. perfect all right. Well, unless there's any other questions, I think we will wrap things up for the evening. Um, thank you all again for those of you that took time out of your evenings to spend learning more about the um, IDS major with us tonight. And thank you again to Amy and Adam for your time and sharing your knowledge and experience with the program. <laughs>